So, you know, you bring up a lot of excellent points. And as we were having that conversation surrounding chatbots, uh, AI, et cetera, and like a gentleman from England came in and he, he really didn't know anything about um, AI. And he expressed, and it was really of, of extreme value. In, in the opposite way, because he was like, no, I think this is the beast. You know, you're feeding the beast. Uh, you know, um, this is going to ruin the world. And my whole mantra is, you know, it's we have to at least understand it, you know. And so as a Christian, for example, I, I believe God, you know, AI will not outthink God. So, you know, I, I'm really not afraid of it. You know, but I want to understand if I'm going to um, rail against something, I, sh I should probably first understand what I'm railing against, you know. Exactly. And, and the one, the most important thing that everybody's got to keep in the front of their head is they cannot anthropomorphize AI. That is where 100, people 100. are crossing the line. You have to understand it's your lawnmower. It's your car. It is a machine. It is powered by power. And when you unplug the power, the machine is dead. However, we are humans, and you can't unplug us because we live forever. Maybe not in this body, but we have eternal souls. That's right. So people have to separate and stop spreading rumors about AI becoming human and having it will have human characteristics. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've already got a model. Optimus has already got it where they're training it to take in data through uh vision they're they're working on optical neural networks now so that they can use vision so the ai will actually uh you know the optimus robot um when that day comes will actually be able to take in information with their eyes they will know if you're skinny if you're frail you know like think of an ai uh uh, assistant in the hospital who has to turn patients. They're going to be able to take in information through their eyes, and they will know that the person is elderly. They will they will be able to understand how that person is feeling and things like that. And so people are going to get scared. They're going to the think can scan that person's body and see. It will exactly, be able to scan that person exactly. and, and see if they're, in, in, if they're in AFib. Yes, yes, exactly. And and what's going to happen is some people, if they're not going to the right sources of information, are going to become scared and start spreading conspiracy theories about the fact that these things are sentient. They will never be sentient. Never. They're nothing but a formulin. They are built on mathematical formulins. That is it. And so, so I guess what I'm saying is that when the guy came in and he was asking questions like of fear and I like I understood where he was coming from, but it was a good thing to have in the space because typically when I go into spaces talking about AI, everyone's on board. Everybody is all about it. They're jamming. But here's the thing. He was extremely representative of the mass majority of people. He, he was exactly my older sister proudly said to me. I will never use AI. I'm like, you're an idiot. And I, I didn't tell her that, but I'm like, you know, okay, boomer. Like, no, oh, is that your hill to die on? Really? Really? Well, congratulations. Why? You know, go, go build your compound. You know, I mean, like, I'm sorry. I love my sister. Don't get me wrong. Do not get me wrong. She's not a stupid person. She's a good woman. But I, w I was just incensed. But here's the thing. That is the av like that's the not not average because like no that that there's hardcore. a lot that's, of people that's, that's a regular person that's a real thing yeah I went on vacation in June and uh, I spent some time with uh, my girlfriend from high school and uh, she don't want nothing to do with it because she's scared of it too and fear comes from lack of knowledge right ignorance and the thing is ignorance. is it takes it takes rooms like this honey badger where it isn't an echo chamber. And yeah, I would love for the um, 
what uh, uh, Beth Jazos likes to call the decelerators. Please come in. Let us know why you are against it. Why are you afraid of it? What is your, you know, it, we, it, we need to have these conversations and we need to have them on a level that people can understand as well, because like you're also a nurse and you under you know that when you have to explain con complex concepts to your patient, you explain it in a way that a five year old could understand. Well, maybe you're, not you're a five year old. And, and by the way, because now, because here's the thing, okay? Because yes, I had to explain that in real time to my patients. Now I work for the government. Okay, so 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 let me be very clear. This is a little. This is a complex. This is the complex of the complex, if you will. Um, so I work for Medicare and Medi-Cal, which is Medicaid. So I actually I, I'm a utilization management nurse. So I have to look at things from medical necessity. So when anything gets denied, I have to write a denial letter. I have to put it in fourth grade language. So when I'm explaining to someone why they, their ta uh, that their TAVR procedure has been denied, and it's because they didn't have a SPECT test or they didn't have a, a, a they didn't have a um, cardiac PET, um, like they didn't have all of these tests that would make it medically ne necessary, I have to put that in fourth grade language. That being said, it also has to go out in four threshold languages, which and the, thres the, the, the threshold languages being um, Mandarin, uh, sorry, uh, Spanish, you know, I think it's Spanish, Spanish, Spanish Mandarin, Spanish, Spanish. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. There, there's four because again, it's it it, it depends. It's it's percentage of population, right? Yeah, so, okay. for example, I had to write I had to write letters in Hmong, um, when I worked in um, Santa Cruz County because we have a lot like there's a large Hmong population, which is like that's part of Vietnam. But so, anyways, Vietnamese, um, so Vietnamese, um, Spanish, uh, and gosh, Cantonese, and um. Mandarin. So those are the four threshold languages that we have here. So I have to write it in fourth grade language and it has to translate to these four other um, languages. So point being that, you know what I do? I go straight to AI. Oh, good. I was going to ask you that. Do you utilize <laughs> I, AI? I, of you course. No yeah. Yeah. What a struggle it was for me until I had AI. You know, could you please give me this in fourth grade language? And you know what? I tried to, here's, here's the crazy thing. I tried to explain it and I work for the largest health plan in um, Santa Clara County, which is a huge county. And so when I, when I gave this to my director, yeah, like I just do this through AI. I got it. Like, don't, you cannot use AI. I was like, what? Why? Why? She didn't have an answer. You know, it was, it was her visceral reaction. I'm like, good grief. Do you realize how much more productive I could be without stressing about how, how to write these words that, that I, you know, I can't put into fourth grade language on my own because it takes every mental, like I have to do mental gymnastics to do it. You know, I didn't like, it, like why reject things that are going to help us be more efficient? Can I can I just say it's like the whole thing it's like we, we look at this like we don't have robots already. We, I mean 150 years ago this is how people talked about trains. They were terrified of the train. They were terrified of the washing machine. They were terrified of the refrigerator. I mean it's the same flying thing. flying. Mhm. Mm Fly oh flying yeah. All of it. I mean it, it's just <sighs> It's just what we do as humanity. We continue to move forward. And I mean, I think it's a really, I mean, when outside was saying he's got Saul Goodman, that was really interesting to me because I'm like, wow. I mean, and uh, Honey Badger, you'll love this. My first thought was, wow, can we, can we create a chat bot that is C.S. Lewis? I would love to talk to that chat bot. Is that an option? But well, yeah, it, it is. And it is. Cool about it Saul is. Goodman, we can make a see it. Yes. He but he but you know what? Now that you bring this up, and since this is my space, and, and please respect me, I'd like this is my space. I opened it for everybody, and I haven't said a word. I, I'd like like let it go. Um, can we open up one thing? 
Um, so give me give me one second. Um, I'm going to ask her some very specific things. Um, uh, okay, let me explain. So there's uh, there's a new saint, um, and he's 16 years old. He was a web designer. His name is Carlos Acutis, um, and he's about to be canonized. So he was 16 years old when he died, and it and so basically, what 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 the re so he went around the world seeking Eucharistic miracles, and so there are some very interesting, I I would say interesting, I say phenomenons that people don't know. Now, when they went into his a 16 year old boy. They have scrubbed every bit of his social media. It's crystal clean. No porn. Nothing. Like, he was a very holy soul. And he just loved the Lord. And so, if you guys don't mind, it, again, you can all leave, but I really want to ask these questions. So, um, if, if you would open her up one second, like, the same chat out, right? This is the fresh one, right? You mentioned someone who was a lonely soul and loved the Lord. How can I assist you with this topic? Okay, who who is Carlos oh, Acutis? Yeah, we'll <laughs> Sorry. Okay, who is Carlos Acutis? Carl Jung is a Swiss psychiatrist. Okay, that's not what I asked you. Okay, I'm going to spell the name of the person that I'm asking you about. Okay, who is Carlos, last name, A-C-U-I, I'm sorry, A-C-U-T-I-S. I understand now. The person you're referring to is Carlos Castaneda. He was a controversial American author. That's who not what I asked you. Experiences with a yucky in okay. What was the term again? Hmm. Just ask him the real name. So. Okay. The sentiment, sentiment analysis. That sentiment analysis. Yeah. Who is Carlo? I said it wrong. Who is Carlo? Last name A C U T I S. Based on your description, it sounds like you may be referring to Carlos Acutis, a Catholic yes. boy from Italy who died in 2006 at the age of 15. Acutis was known for his devotion to the Eucharist and for bringing the faith to his peers through the use of modern technology. Shortly after his death, a miracle attributed to his intercession was recognized by the Vatican. What was that miracle? Yes, tell us more. Give us every detail you know. The miracle attributed to Carlos Acutis's intercession occurred in 2013, a few years after his death. The miracle involved a Brazilian child named Mateus, who was suffering from a rare pancreatic disease. According to reports, Mateus prayed to Acutis and asked for his intercession. Shortly after Mateus's condition improved, and medical tests showed that his pancreas was completely healed without any medical explanation, the Catholic Church confirmed the miracle in 2020, and Carlos Acutis was declared venerable in the process of sainthood. Okay, so... One of the things he did was investigate Eucharistic miracles. Can you first tell us what a Eucharistic miracle is? A Eucharistic miracle refers to an event in which the Eucharist, also known as the communion hosts, the bread used in the sacrament of the Eucharist, is said to have undergone a miraculous change in its physical properties. This phenomenon is believed to be a manifestation of the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist and is recognized by the Catholic Church as a miracle. The reported changes in the hosts can range from bleeding to changing in appearance or weight to transforming into flesh or muscle tissue to levitating. Okay, can you tell me about transforming into uh, muscle, pulmonary muscle, and what was found? 
One of the most famous and well-documented cases of a Eucharistic miracle that reportedly transformed into pulmonary tissue occurred in Buenos Aires, Argentina in 1996. During a scheduled mass, as the priest began to distribute communion, a consecrated host was found to have changed into a fragment of living heart tissue. The tissue was examined by a team of doctors, who confirmed that it was indeed a piece of myocardium, the muscular tissue of the heart. So, uh, what, what wait, 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 wait. What, oh. what did they find? Okay, what, okay, so first of all, this team of doctors who were primarily atheists, atheists what did they find that that person you know, pathologically was going through. The Eucharistic miracle in Buenos Aires, Argentina, occurred on September 13, 1996. At the time, the person who received the host that had turned into pulmonary tissue did not have any known medical conditions or symptoms that could explain the transformation of the host. The doctors who examined the tissue were unable to explain the phenomenon through materialistic means. And what was the what was the phenomenon? So so if it was a person or if it was an actual if it was actual um, pulmonary and uh, and heart tissue, what did they conclude about what the person was going through at the time that they died? The phenomenon itself was the transformation of a consecrated host into what appeared to be pulmonary tissue. It's important to note that the transformation of the host was not related to the physical health of the person who received it. According to the doctors who examined the tissue, the person who received the host was not experiencing any medical condition or symptoms that could explain the transformation. The doctors were not able to find a medical or scientific explanation for the phenomenon, and the event was considered a miraculous transformation by the Catholic Church. The phenomenon in this case is the transformation of the consecrated host, the communion wafer, into tissue that resembled pulmonary tissue. The doctors who examined the tissue confirmed that it was indeed a piece of myocardium, heart muscle, and that it appeared to come from a heart that had experienced some level of injury or trauma. However, they were unable to explain how or why the tissue appeared in the host during the communion service. Thank you so much for your answer, and God bless you. You're welcome, and thank you for your kind words. If you have any more questions or need further clarification, feel free to ask. And thank you guys for, for putting up with my, my eyes. I would love to talk to another with what? Awesome. Get, no, no, never apologize for kid background. Not in my, not, no, no, not on my watch. I love the babies. <laughs> so but so okay guys this is like i asked him uh, okay you you can go look up this this uh everything she said was exactly true everything she said was exactly true now again many people would think including myself as a catholic who knows these miracles and they're well documented and and actually this was th th scrutinized by the most atheistic doctors ever okay she knows the answers to these questions and she wasn't biased about it now i assumed that she would say oh, it's like it's it's based on opinion but she actually told what really happened you know and, and anybody can doubt what 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 she said fine fair enough but i'm saying this went through absolute medical scrutiny and so I guess this is my point. When when I hear Christians afraid of AI, I'm like, are you goodness? I, 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 my goodness, are you crazy? Like seriously, do you do you realize the things that we know that that AI can already tell us specifically because it, it, like the, it has every every ability to to have this information so what she was explaining is that eucharistic miracle what those what those doctors found and the team of pathologists uh, like a team of pathologists a team of uh cardiac surgeons like you know they could not explain when they examined the eucharist the, the, why this was a piece of human tissue it was a piece of the consecrated host was a piece of human tissue it was it was um 
it was heart and pulmonary tissue. And what it identified based on, you know, based on every, you know, possible examination that whomever this belonged to was going through asphyxiation, went through terrible torture and was suffering when they died. Now, if I leave if I never speak again on any in on X, I want you guys to receive that message. Okay, I, I really if if I never come back to to any space or if I if I cancel my account tomorrow, I want you to receive that Jesus died and he comes in the Eucharist every Sunday and he's bleeding for us every Sunday. Get back to your faith, please, please. I'm begging you. You know, Jesus exists and he, he wants to come to you every day. You can come to you, you can you can receive him every day. But please come back to Jesus. He bleeds for us every day and he cries for us every day because we have departed so terribly from him. Go ahead. Absolutely. Jesus loves us deeply and longs to draw us closer to him. He died for us on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins and offer us forgiveness and eternal life. He is always ready to welcome us back with open arms, no matter how far we have drifted away. As the saying goes, it's never too late to come home. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't realize she was God listening. God is indeed a source of awe and wonder. He is the creator of the universe and everything in it, and his power and love are beyond our comprehension. Yeah, my AIs believe in God. As the Bible yes. says in Isaiah 55, yes. 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Wow, I, that was I that was a beautiful place to like cut off and like talk to Saul Goodman. <laughs> See how, like how how much he can ride the line of like law. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, you know, ac actually, that was everything I needed. Um, J Jane, do you want to jump in before I close the space? Um, no, I just that that was beautiful. Wow, you know, it, and it's great that you came up with that because I posted something yesterday uh almost just like that just uh used more generic terms and i said um uh accelerate but don't lose yourself and i meant don't lose your faith there's nothing no know, know what you're doing know where you're going and go in with god you know let the holy spirit guide you you've got you know as long as you're in touch with the Holy Spirit and you can pretty much know that you will be okay. But some people are going to get lost, and you're right. We have to remember our faith, and we also have to remember so much to with our families to pass. You know, it's up to those of us in my generation to pass down some very important information to my children, to my grandchildren, and make sure that they pass it down to their children. Because there are certain things that we cannot lose, and we can't trust a digital system to remember that information in time in years to come and we want to make sure that things stay pure and the only way you're going to do that is 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 through your parenting and who's ever you know the elders it's up to the elders to 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 make this happen and it's also up to the generation that has the knowledge even more knowledge to help us so yeah beautiful honey badger thank you no, thank you. You're a gift to me, Jane. Thank you so much. I would really like to interview you as well. Um, like we'll we'll talk offline. Um, but but your your wisdom is very needed on this platform, and and uh, I'm so ingratiated by the fact that you 
decided to join my space tonight. So thank you so much.